empty the chamber on them. And how do you do that? Four, six seconds, point eight, point B, everything you got. Everything you got. Turn that shit up. Let's go. Let's go. Welcome to the Morning Scoop World Order. It is Wednesday, August 24th. I can't believe we are this close, but we are, guys, we're halfway through the week. One more week. We're playing Notre Dame on Saturday. I can't believe it. About 10 days out. Uh, can't wait for it. I think it's going to be an incredible game, incredible atmosphere. I've been studying Notre Dame a lot. I think they'll be a good challenge for us. Uh, I think we'll handle them, but I think they're going to be a good challenge, and they have some very, very good players. So uh, with that being said, we're going to get into expansion. we got a bunch of good stuff with Nevada Bucks. So, uh as always, start this thing off. I appreciate you guys. I thank you guys. You guys are the reason why we are growing. Our site is growing. It has been unbelievable. Comment, comment. What teams, after this newest round of expansion information that has come out, what teams do you absolutely want to join the Big Ten? Is it Oregon? Is it Washington? Is it Arizona? Is it UNC? Is it Duke? Uh, there's a lot of teams out there that are seemingly free agents from the ACC and the Pac-12 and the Big 12. Who do you guys want us to get? You know, and obviously with the academic profile, who knows? But things are very fluid right now. It's very fun. With that being said, it's time to bring in my friend Nevada. Nevada, how are you tonight? Doing great. You know, things are fast and furious on the expansion front. And uh, I know we're going to talk a little bit about expansion, but, I, you know, I, I'd be remiss without saying that, you know, we've added a, a expansion insider at uh, Buckeye Scoop, the Oracle. And, you know, I, I, I like to think that I've got some really good contacts on the expansion front. We've broken some pretty big stories regarding expansion, specifically USC to the Big Ten. But uh, the Oracle knows a lot of stuff that I, he just has a per different perspective. My perspective is strictly from the broadcast side, and his is a little bit more general, including Big Ten office admin. And um, he's been un an unbelievable addition, and I've been I've been learning a lot of, about expansion through this process as well. So um, I'm excited to, uh, to share what I've learned and, and what I've heard. Yeah, I think we're the only site that invested in an, an insider strictly for the new kind of morphing of college football when it comes to uh, realignment, the NFL type divisions, you know, who's going where. And you're right, Oracle's been nails on this stuff on the TV deal because uh, this is probably the most trans transformative, you know, couple of years that we'll ever see in college football in terms of, you know, the old college football that we used to know is pretty much dead and, uh, it's morphing right in front of our eyes, and, and we've got a guy that really knows it. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to get right into the show. Uh, obviously, a ton has been made of the media deal. It is seven years, $7 billion to the Big Ten. Uh, ESPN is out. Uh, CBS is in, along with uh, Fox and NBC. Nevada, uh, your thoughts on this media deal? What does it do for the Big Ten? What does it do for uh, the lore of the Big Ten in terms of adding new uh, partners like a Notre Dame, like an Oregon uh, to the conference? Well, I mean, for the first time ever in Big Ten history, you're hearing, you know, the Big Ten talking publicly about looking for more teams for expansion and being aggressive on that front, which is such a change. I mean, you think back 24 months ago and they would, when asked about expansion, they, they, Put out some words like ah, it's not even on our radar we're not really sure we're we're not really contemplating it well well now it's literally a topic of conversation nearly every day within the big 10 office and this new contract basically establishes as we've been saying for you know about 18 months now that there's only going to be two big super conferences there's going to be the sec in some way shape or form and there's going to be the big 10 in some way shape or form and they're going to form these two competing entities think AFC, NFC, that are going to have their own Super Bowl of college football. And for teams on the outside, you've got a choice. You've got to pick, are you going to be on the inside or are you going to be on the outside? And that's why a school like USC, I mean, USC was such a huge, you know, huge get for the Big Ten to grab. I mean, really, the only thing that could have trumped Oklahoma and Texas was USC and, and the Big Ten pulled it off. Well, now you've got all these other schools that are on the outside looking in. You've got Oregon that's you know desperately trying to get into the Big Ten right now, and actively as we're speaking, you know, uh, actively lobbying the Big Ten for to, to get in using all the uh, the throw weight and influence of Phil Knight. You've got Washington. Um, you know, you've got the ACC schools realize that they're not they're not going to be part of a conference unless they jump in. So you've got UNC, you've got UVA, you've got Georgia Tech. Um, 
you know, it's it's really going to be, it, it, you know, college football is not going to look anything like it is right now within the next five years. It's going to be completely different. And the NCAA is going to have increasingly less input as the uh, the conferences keep the money themselves, set the rules themselves, dictate the the the, uh, the standards by which every team plays by. And and that's again, it's driving these teams to want to be part of one of these two conferences. And if, if you happen to be academically inclined, if you, you know, if you're a superior academic school, if you're a research one school, if you're an AAU school, you're going to go to the Big Ten, and then the football schools are going to go to the uh, the SEC and then everybody else is going to be on the outside looking in. So it's uh it's an exciting time, that's for sure. Yeah, and Oregon is is the name that, you know, you've mentioned over the last multiple months, really over the last year as a team uh to watch out for uh a ton of reports came out in the last 2 days um that you know said that they're making overtures, I mean, very publicly to the Big 10. Do you think that this gets done with Oregon? I do. I think Oregon, I think it's inevitable that they go to the Big Ten. And, you know, I, I, I think it's going to pull a couple of other schools with it. And, you know, the, the Oracle made a really good point today inside the board, which is something I really hadn't considered and I kind of followed up on. And I, I think he's right, which is the Big Ten doesn't want to be seen as the, the, uh, the conference that ended it all for the Pac-12. So I think, you know, the Big Ten's trying to influence some of these other schools to maybe jump to the Big 12. Because the Big 12, you know, needs to, you know, stay viable right now. And the, uh, you know, I think once the Pac-12 schools jump, and then you're going to have to have schools that are left over, and that's where an Oregon, a Washington, a Stanford, uh, you know, potentially a Cal, come into play for the Big 10. And and I think it's, uh, it's, you know, there's a, a a lot of, you know, intrigue going on behind the scenes right now, but. Oregon would be my, you know, prohibitive favorite bet for next Pac-12 school to jump this way, and 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 I and I think it's going to happen soon. Yeah, I uh, I would love Oregon. Obviously, I'm a big Phil Knight fan. You know, the guy. Uh, I just can't imagine. You know, he's almost 84 years old. You know, it's his legacy. Uh, he's done a lot for college football, a lot for football in general, a lot for sports in general. Basketball I did a ton of for, and I just can't imagine him, you know, not using his muscle to do everything he can to make sure that his alma mater isn't thrown out of the mix in college football. So they're not a fit obviously for the sec. So the big 10 seems like the obvious fit. Um, I think that uh, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, cause I, I just feel like the big 12 isn't going to exist. It's like the pac 12 isn't going to exist. And, you know, it, it's kind of like, you know, if you're guiding teams to these other, you know, to a different conference, like, is it just going to be like a life raft that's got to, a leak in the bottom of it, you know, because I, I just feel like the Big Ten and and the SEC are going to be the two left standing, and then after that, it's it's going to be like a a conglomeration of teams that are kind of between the super conferences and like one double A, and they're kind of be like their own little thing. But what are your thoughts on that, Nevada? Could that happen? Could there be like a third, you know, conference that pulls all of the not quite mid made, you know, the max, not not quite those types, but like the you know, kind of the, the the teams that are the 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 misfit toys in this whole expansion equation. Well, I mean, think about it like in college basketball, where you have the NCAA tournament and then you have the NIT tournament. You know, and yes. I think that's kind of what you're going to be. That's what you're going to be ended up with. And you know, uh, you know, this the expansion stuff is so fluid, and and you know, it's it's such a fascinating topic because there's just so many dimensions to it. Like, as we've talked about, there's the research dimension to it. There, there's the academic dimension to it. There's the college football dimension to it. There's the college basketball thing. There's the Olympic sport dimension to it. And that's where you look at a school like Stanford and you go, wow, you know, what does Stanford add to the Big Ten? Well, Stanford is, you know, the, the number one Olympic sports school in the world. Um, as well as, in my opinion, that the 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 best academic school in the world. Now, maybe their football program isn't you know quite on a par with the you know, the top 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 teams, but they bring a lot to the uh, you know when you're trying to buy brands, and you know that's been one of the big things that things have changed. You know, five years ago it was about buying markets and specifically cable markets, but now you know with streaming it's about buying brands. And Stanford is a brand, and that's where you know I think that, you know they've got a lot of they've got a lot of cachet. And, you know, for the people, the powers that be, the ones that are making the decisions for the Big Ten, n- namely the, uh, you know, the chancellor's university presidents, being affiliated with Stanford, 
means something. And it means a lot to them because, you know, they they all want to be Stanford academically. I think every school wants to be Stanford academically. And um, I think, you know, they're another one that's uh, an, almost an inevitable add to the Big Ten going forward. And and I, I just, like I said, I'm excited about the, uh, you know, what the future holds for the, for the Big Ten from an expansion standpoint. And, you know, I just keep thinking about these great matchups that we're going to get, you know, season in and season out, the USC, Ohio States and the, you know, the, the future, whether it be Notre Dame or Oregon or UCLA or, or you know, Stanford. I mean, it's just, the, the, the schedules just got way better. So if you're a, a suite holder or a club ticket holder or a season ticket holder, your seats just got more valuable because there's going to be premier matchup after premier matchup every week. And that's what college football wants because that's what drives college football is these premier matchups. And when they're in the same conference, then you get the games. Yeah. And, and to me, I think that that's a great point because, you know, the thing about Ohio state is, you know, we open up with, probably the biggest home opener that we've ever had with Notre Dame to, you know, top five matchup. But then after that, it's kind of like, uh, okay, yeah, we gotta, we gotta win this one, but then we got Arkansas state to, you know, kind of like recover for a little bit, relax a little bit. And it's not going to be like that. Now when you add, you know, USC, you had Stanford, you had Oregon, you know, these teams that, you know, could, you know, I mean, Oregon beat us last time they played us. I mean, USC beat us in, in 09. So, I mean, there's going to be like some real teams now. And so the, the Arkansas States of the world, it's going to be the ultimate haves and haves nots because those teams show up, they get a big check to come and get whipped by the Buckeyes, but those games are going to be gone, and it's going to devastate those smaller programs that need those those money games, so to speak. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be fascinating. So we're going to uh, switch gears a little bit here and go on to the current team. Uh, camp standouts. I mean, I've checked with about a dozen people that have been in camp every day, and and I know you've checked with a ton of people. Uh, who stood out? I love this photo of, of Dewan and, and Jack Sawyer because these are two guys that had outstanding camps, two guys that are really, uh, you know, they're really, you know, preseason All-American types, guys that are really heralded, really hyped. Um, Nevada, and then, you, you know, behind there, you see Trey Henderson, who's obviously, you know, first-team preseason All-American as well. Nevada who stood out over the last two weeks of camp as we move into Notre Dame prep week? And, uh, and who do you think um, might have a little bit of work to do? You know, some guys got injured. Who are the guys that stood out? Who are the guys that need to, to, to get back? Uh, right. Well, I want to focus on one guy, the guy that I haven't talked a lot about, you know, we've talked a lot about Jack Sawyer and Paris Johnson and Dewan and, you know, the Tommy Eichenberg, we've, we've talked a lot about some of the, the obvious stars in the team, but a guy that just really has made an impact on me this entire fall has been Julian Fleming. And Fleming is a guy that, you know, I had questions about, you know, what type of player he was going to be here at, at, uh, at Ohio state. And, you know, the, uh, I, I think that he came in highly touted. He's been, you know, battling injury and, and really, really struggling to try to find a, a few with a really deep, deep wide receiver room at Ohio State. And now he, he's a guy that's kind of come on and, you know, in the he, he now is to the point where he was hurt, had his shoulder dislocated, popped it back in, refused the treatment and still went out and balled out. And like, that's the kind of player that we're talking about. That's that's the kind of toughness that we're seeing from him. And that's, that stuff's contagious. I mean, that's, that, that story is becoming lore around Ohio state right now, because you know, that that's a toughness that we were lacking last year. And you don't expect to see it from your wide receivers or seeing your wide receivers be the guy that's the tough guy. That's really showing the other guys what, what it, it, he's going to do what it needs to, to be done. But Fleming's been one that stepped up, has done it, has done it. You know, again, is he going to take time away from, a Mecca or from Marvin Harrison or from JSN. No, but he's going to play. He's going to play a lot and he's going to play well. And he, uh, he's been somebody who's just made, made a real impact. I mean, he, he's not somebody that I expected that I would be talking about on August 24th uh, with such enthusiasm, but he's really, he's really made an impact on me and really somebody that I'm uh, really excited to see, you know, come, come game time. Yeah. And he really, you know, exemplifies what it means to be an Ohio State Buckeye. Because honestly, as, as much as talk, people talk about, you know, all the great things that come with being a Buckeye, you know, if you get hurt and you're an Ohio State Buckeye, you can lose your spot and you could end up on the outside looking in. You could be out of the rotation. Like, 
you know, you can't really miss too much time, especially in the wide receiver room. Good Lord, where it's the most loaded position group maybe in the entire country is the Ohio State wide receiver room. And if, you, know, you miss a few days, man. All of a sudden, it's like you, know, you got Jaden Ballard nipping your heels. You got these freshmen, uh, really good players that are dying to take your spot. And, you know, Julian's been – he's been repping with, you know, with the ones that – at the Z, uh, you know, the outside flanker receiver, and, and he could end up easily having a, you know, um, you know, a guy like Jaden, you know, you know, fighting him tooth and nail for every single rep, so you can't really miss time. I mean, for me, obviously, the the story of of camp so far has been Jack Sawyer. Jack Sawyer has been outstanding, much heavier than he was last year, which he needed. He got kind of bounced around last year when he's a little bit lighter. Um, he's given our tackles a lot of work. Uh, JT2, Malowal, two guys that are really, really good players, uh, guys that are, are are high ceiling guys, first round type guys, and guys that frankly we need to have big years because our pass rush was non existent last year and it it killed our defense. You know, as much as we bag on Kerry Combs and we bag on the scheme and all that, and and he has plenty of faults, but you know, our guys did not get to the quarterback versus good teams last year. They couldn't defeat blocks, they couldn't pass rush. And it really hung our defense out to dry. Uh, it made it easy for us, for teams to move the ball on us. And, uh, you know, I, I think that those days are over. I think our interior guys, you know, whether it's John Cage, Michael, you know, Michael Hill, Ty Leak, uh, Teron Vincent, you know, those guys I think have, have felt the heat just because they weren't productive last year and they gave up a lot of yards against Michigan, a lot of yards against Utah. Uh, you know, that soft underbelly of last year's defense hopefully is gone. And uh, we're going to need that front four to really have a big day against Notre Dame if we hope to contain their rushing attack. Uh, so with that being said, Notre Dame, uh, we are 10 days out or so in Nevada. How are you feeling about this matchup? Uh, I put on a, a, a photo of Isaiah Falski. He's our first team All-American defensive end. He's a very good player. Um, he's a guy that would probably start for us at defensive end. He's uh, AP first team All-American preseason uh, what are your thoughts heading into this game? Any trepidation? Do you feel better since camp is over and you know what you know? Do you feel worse? Uh, where are you at right now with this game? Well, I think Ohio State has had as good a camp as you could possibly have. And from that standpoint, I'm feeling really good. I, I, I feel like the Knowles hire was as big a hire. I mean, it, it will have a, the same type of impact that you know bringing Walt Harris had in for people that remember – I think that was 94, 95, when he came over to the OSU offense or Tom Herman, his impact on the offense. I think Knowles is going to have a similar impact on the defense, and that's going to make all the difference in the world. Um, but, you know, my, my take on the game is a little different than most people. I, I don't think Notre Dame is going to try to come out running the ball at Ohio State. I think they're going to come out passing. I think they're going to come out a little dink and dunk try to use our pressure, you know, do they know that we're going to be excited? We're going to be blitzing. We're going to be bringing the pressure. And I think they'll be screening us, throwing those little dump off passes that, you know, that stuff that, that that's annoying to play against those, those, you know, spread us out, just dink and dunk down the field. And so it's a question of, you know, is Ohio State going to be ready for that? And can Knowles, you know, adjust in the fly, but I don't think it's going to be a big slobber knocker battle. I, you know, I, I've been talking to my Notre Dame guys and talking to people that are at the Notre Dame camps. And I, I really think Notre Dame's plan is going to be a little different. I think they're going to try to finesse us and uh, they're going to see if, if they can kind of carve up this uh, OSU defense and, and find the soft spots. And it, that's, uh, that's what I'm expecting. Yeah. It's, it's going to be interesting. I, I fully expect them to, to run the ball just because you know, if I've watched those last two games where we gave up over 250 each game, I, I just think you have to, Proved that Ohio State is different and they can stop it and whatever. And you know, I think that with the the injury news that their best offensive lineman is potentially out with a foot sprain, that helps Ohio State. Now, I learned my lesson last year when we were getting ready to play Oregon, and it seemed like everything was breaking our way. You know, Kayvon Thibodeau was out, Justin Flo, their star linebacker, was out, and it was a you know a nine a.m. body start time. I was like, oh man, this is going to be great for us and. They came out and just worked us. So I, I don't know. Um, I don't know what to make of their best alignment being hurt and potentially out. Uh, but it's something that I I've been monitoring because you know as training camp goes on, you always kind of see who has had a significant injury. Uh, we frankly, you know, we got stank, but a little bit at cornerback, but you know, it wasn't 
too bad. You know, Denzel's back, Jordan Hancock's back. So we're, we're pretty healthy, you know, getting through camp, uh, no major line issues. So, you know, it, it's always one of those things where at the end of camp, you kind of monitor you know, who's lost someone and who hasn't, but, uh, I'm excited about this one. So any closing thoughts about it? expansion, Notre Dame camp, uh, wrap this one up uh any thoughts on this one and closing it out not just uh, you know it's just what a great time to be on the message board I, I you know the board's popping you know if you want to learn about expansion you want to learn about ohio state football you want to learn something some stuff that you don't you didn't know or or you want to you know find out be a little bit smarter than that guy sitting next to you at the stadium you know come be joined part of the uh the message board, the message board community just gets better and better and better with the more people that join it because we get more points of view, more inputs. And uh, it's, you know, what a fun time to be on the message board. And and I, I'm having a ball. And like I said, with expansion, I, I could talk expansion all day long. And I think with the way things are happening right now on the expansion front, you know, buckle up because I don't even think we've scratched the surface on it. And I think uh, things are going to be coming hot and heavy and, and uh, it's uh, it, like I said, it's just it's a great time to be on Buckeye Scoop. And we just appreciate all of our, our sponsors and all of our members and all the people that support us. It's uh, it's just just a great time. And and we're just sincerely thankful for everyone. Yeah, I love that, man. So I'm going to wrap this thing up again. As Nevada said, the number one Ohio State insider site, we are growing like crazy. It is the season to be in the know what's going on in the woody Hayes? what is going on with ohio state football buckeyescape.com uh we're leading the way right now our board is the most active in the industry uh we monitor we check the stats we really um are really excited about the direction we're going in because it is crazy right now and with expansion with the team inside you know going into the notre dame game there's a lot of stuff to talk about uh, if you enjoyed this, please leave us a like, you know, subscribe to our channel. It has been growing. We thank you guys so much. Comment, who do you want to see next in the Big Ten? Because there are a lot of free agents out there. Stanford is the crown jewel type. Oregon, Washington, Colorado, Duke, North Carolina. Who do you want in the Big Ten? If you're the commissioner of the Big Ten, who do you want in here? So leave that in the comments. I appreciate you guys as always. Thank you so much, Scoop family. Thank you, Buckeye Nation. You guys have a great day. Go Bucks.